our viewer question today, uh, they have asked, when it comes to plant milks, do you have certain brands that you would recommend or do you think that making them at home is best? Oh, plant milks. Uh, whoever thought we'd been talking about it, I so welcome the whole concept of plant milk. When I first entered the vegan world back in 1981, there you, you could buy powdered soy milk at the health food store and you had to mix it up in a pitcher of water and it tasted just dreadful. And then along comes not only commercial soy milk, uh, but a, 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 imaginative products from these different grains that you never thought you could make milk out of oat milk and hemp milk and rice milk and almond milk. It was wonderful. And I, I certainly welcome these wonderful milks and, and I really enjoy pouring them on cereal and uh, and there's no reason for drinking beverages. Uh, that water is what you want to drink. Uh, but to uh, put a splash of, uh, of almond milk or, or hemp milk uh, over our blueberries in the evening that we have for dessert. It's a lovely, uh, lovely touch. So I'm very grateful for these plant-based milks. Uh, as the viewer may well know, I've mentioned a few types of plant milks that have a little controversy associated with them. The, uh, the almond growers apparently use a lot of water, and people say don't use almond milk, it's just six almonds in a, bag, in a box of water. Uh, you're better off making your own at home, which I'll talk about because my wife makes almond milk. Uh, and uh, the rice milk, unfortunately, is made from rice. There's now having a significant amount of arsenic found in it because we, uh, they grew cotton and used arsenic pesticides in uh, cotton fields, and now they're growing rice off those same fields, and the arsenic is being picked up by the rice. And so the question about rice milk, and, and these are valid considerations. We don't buy commercial almond milk or rice milk anymore. We really can find our, uh, our plant milk purchases uh, to oat milk and hemp milk, basically. Uh, we occasionally will buy some soy milk, but again, I don't use it for, for a drinking beverage. Uh, now, drilling on down, which is I think really behind the question about making the milks at home, you're asking which brand. I'm not going to name any particular brands, but I would urge the viewers uh, to rather than choose a particular brand, uh, become a discriminating consumer. And when you pick that box off the shelf thing about buying it, have a look at the ingredient panel. And you want to get it with the minimum amount of additional ingredients. It would be nice if it was just oats, water, and, uh, and uh, maybe a little bit of Job's Tears or some subtle sweetener like that. Uh, but some of them, in order to increase the, the mouthfeel, the creaminess of the, the beverage, uh, or the nutritional values, or the shelf life to preserve it. If you look, sometimes there's a, a disturbing amount of uh, uh, sugars and, and oils and carrageenan and, and all sorts of additives added in that. So you want to compare the different types of plant milks uh, while you're standing right in, in the supermarket before you decide uh, to bring it home. Uh, you want to choose the organic version. I'd rather have it made out of organic oats or in organic unsprayed uh, hemp than I would the uh, commercial uh, type of uh, uh, production uh, means. And, uh, and you know that some of them are fortified uh, with uh, a couple of nutrients that especially plant-based folks need to get. Vitamin B12 is often added to some soy milks, rice milks I've seen. And there's calcium fortified almond milks and, and uh, oat milks. And, uh, and if that appeals to you and there isn't a lot of other excipient ingredients there, uh, that's an absolutely valid way uh, to boost your calcium intake during the day. So I'm a big fan of calcium fortified plant milks. So the general guidance on the plant milks is get the version that's as organic as possible, uh, that's got as few additives as possible, and that might have some of the added vitamins and minerals that, that would benefit you in your particular life. Now that said, when you're buying that box of, of plant milk, you're buying basically a box of water, uh, mostly what's in it. Uh, and given the calculations they make to, to get the ingredients together, do the processing, and get their little profit off of it for the store and the manufacturer, they can, you know, be two and a half bucks uh, for, or more for, for one box of oat milk or hemp milk. 
And there comes a point saying, hmm, uh, could I make this at home myself? And uh, we do that frequently. My wife does that frequently we have it at our house. And uh, Elise will, uh, I know we've got some plant milk on the way because uh, at night when we're cleaning up the kitchen, there's a bowl of raw cashews soaking in, in a bowl of water or raw almonds soaking in a bowl of water. So soak them overnight. Uh, and the next morning, puts it in the Vitamix, blends it up. Uh, and then strains it through a really fine cheesecloth, uh, some kind of strained tofu through. And, uh, and we're left with this creamy, lovely uh, milk, that got the cashew milk or almond milk. Uh, they actually, again, uh, splash on, on our cereal. It lasts a couple of days. And, uh, no reason to, we, you know, to you have it last for two weeks in the fridge. You want to use this wonderful beverage. And I haven't calculated out the, the cost of the homemade versus the, uh, the store-bought them. Cashews are, are not cheap, almonds are not cheap. Uh, and so I don't know if there's a huge cost savings, but it's certainly uh, more homegrown, if you will. And we know there's no uh, funny added ingredients or contaminants because we made it ourselves out of pure water. So uh, I'm a big fan of making those milks at home. And again, it's a little bit of work and hassle. So it depends where you are. If you're a, uh, a bachelor guy and you have time to get into soaking nuts all up, then, then buy the cleanest plant milks you can. Uh, but if you got some time and uh, you enjoy creating healthy foods for yourself, then get into making your own uh, uh, nut milks, uh, uh, both almond and cashew, and there's probably other ones you can make. Uh, and try that at home yourself. It's a, it's a nice hobby and it, and it tastes great. So hopefully that's clarified a bit about uh, store-bought milks and, uh, and homemade milks. And whoever thought we'd been talking about these wonderful substitutes for dairy milk on your cereal, uh, whoever thought that there could be anything beyond that, but we're in this great, wonderful age where some people have thought about it and made some wonderful products. I'm very grateful for all these uh, products that are available and for the example he said, for just the idea they put in the shopper's head that there's another way to enjoy your breakfast without uh, causing suffering to the, uh, the cows and calves and all the other uh, animals that, that pay for our, uh, our taste for conventional dairy products. So thanks for the question, I hope that helped. Hi everyone, Dr. Michael Clapper here announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K. Each day, Annie Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you want to see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our daily Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.